SUV, well, that's an extremely popular term with the Indian car buyer. Now, originally, it was meant for something that was sporty and had great off-road credentials. But with the growing popularity of the segment, everyone wants to cash in on the craze. And the definition lines have definitely blurred. These days, it's meant for anything from a plumbed-up hatch to something with higher ground clearance and a more upright stance. Well, we have cross hatches and we have compact SUVs. There are some that are styled ground up to look like an SUV, like the Brezza. It's not beefy and butch, but it has the upright stance with the massive 198mm of ground clearance and the blackened pillars with a contrast roof that adds a dash of style. There are the cross hatches like the i20 Active, which doesn't really have any sheet metal changes and looks very similar to the i20. There is just cladding, clearance has been raised to 190mm and roof rails have been added to give it the necessary muscle. There is the Honda WRV, and it's not just cladding and ground clearance changes. Honda have given the Jazz an entirely new beefier front. Revise the rear, given it larger tyres with wider rubber and raise the ground clearance to 188mm. Of course, there's additional cladding and roof rails too. Now, with the recently launched WRB, a lot of you wrote in to us wanting to compare it at both ends. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. We decided to pit it against its two most popular rivals. At one end, the Hyundai Active i20, a crosshatch, and at the other end, a compact SUV, the Maruti Suzuki Brezza. Well, let's see where the WRB stands. Let's take a look inside the cars. Now, the one that offers the best visibility, the most commanding position and the most SUV-like feel from behind the wheel is most definitely the Brezza. Now, the Brezza does use a lot of parts from across the Maruti range and you can see them all over the cabin. The lower plastics are also just that a bit low. However, you do get all the bells and whistles. You get infotainment system with touchscreen, climate control and a lot more. And you can add a lot of jazz to this cabin in terms of patterns and colours as well. Also, it remains a practical cabin. The i20 Active 2 has the bold colour combos that are quite zany and there is a new touchscreen infotainment system. For the rest, it's pretty much like the i20 on the inside. Quality levels though are a notch above the other two cars and in this comparison, it offers up quite a premium feel. The letdown though for the Active i20 is its seating position. Now, the Active i20 feels very much like the i20. It feels car-like. In fact, it feels no different. You sit quite low. And in this kind of a battle, it just doesn't give you that commanding feel that you would like. Now, the WRV has done more than the Active i20 to feel the part. You do sit much higher, you get a better, more commanding view of the road. And visibility in general is good. However, despite the quarter glass area, this A-pillar that leans so far forward does impede vision around corners. For the rest, the interior of the WRV is very similar to the Jazz and it shares the same feeling of space and the cabin feels large and airy. The large supportive seats are comfortable. You also get a touchscreen for infotainment and climate control. And the gear lever, though sportier, doesn't really fit into this beefed up feel and feels quite like a chicken leg. But let's take a look at what all these cars can pack into their boots. Now the WRV's boot has the most space and the lowest loading lip, making it the most practical. But we miss those flip and fold seats that we saw in the Jazz, which would have allowed us to open up more room when needed. Now, the Brezza does come in a close second, but the loading lip is higher, the wheel wells do intrude. However, you can split the seats 60-40 and flip them forward to open up more room. Still, those seats are pretty plump and they don't really fold flat. But what we found out later is you can fold the seat base forward to fold the backrest flat. However, unless you've been told about it, it's not something that you'll find out easily because there isn't any lever as such. You have to put your hand 
into the space between the backrest and the seat base and then pull it forward. Now this may not have as much room as the others and maybe the smallest, but when you flip those 60-40 split seats, they fold absolutely flat and open up more room as well. At the other end, the WRV and the Active i20 get both petrol and diesel variants, but the Brezza comes only with a diesel. So it's the diesels in comparison today. begin with the newest entrant, the WRV. Now the WRV's engine is a familiar one. We've heard it in the jazz, yes, heard it. And we hear it here now as well, it is quite noisy. However, it is better and quieter than the Brezza and refinement levels have improved a bit. As far as performance goes, it's familiar as well. It pulls cleanly from low revs and it builds up power nicely. There are no sudden surges or meaty punchy mid-range like there is in the Brezza. But then the fact that there are no spikes and dips in that power are what make it so drivable whether it's city or out on the highway. However, you hit the 4000 RPM red line really quickly and that's where it gets noisy. So it's better to shift gears up a little early to save yourself from the clatter. The clutch is light and easy and the gears slot in well too. Now, moving to the Brezza, though it makes the same amount of torque as the WRV, it feels entirely different out on the road. Now, the engine of the Brezza is really, really lethargic below 2000 RPM. So, when it's traffic conditions, you are going to have to work the gears to get a move on. However, once that needle passes the 2000 RPM mark, you get this nice surge of power. It's got a meaty, punchy mid-range, which really makes it fun to drive. But the surge in power is not always comfortable and it takes getting used to, especially in slow-moving traffic. This is because the lack of power under 2000 means you really have to extend your foot to get it going and then it suddenly surges ahead. However, when you get to a slightly more open stretch, the Brezza's engine really feels good. And you can pull this engine all the way to that 5000 RPM mark but as you can hear, it gets extremely noisy. So if you want to save yourself from that sound, it's better to short shift. Now, the WRV may have been noisy, but the numbers on our sound testing equipment threw up the fact that the Brezza's Fiat source diesel is even noisier. So definitely shift gears quicker and avoid pushing it to the red line to cut out the engine jolt. On that front, the winner is the Active i20 with the most refined engine. And as far as performance goes, it takes middle ground. The Active i20 sits somewhere in between the WRV and the Brezza. It isn't quite as responsive as the WRV is at lower RPMs, but it's definitely better than the Brezza as far as that is concerned. However, it doesn't have the punchy mid-range that the Brezza has. This is far more a linear acceleration and you never really lack for power. Though it's not as energetic as the WRV at lower RPMs, it still does pull even below 1800 RPM after which you do get more power, but there are no sudden surges. Also, there is no real point in pushing the active i20 to the red line. But it's not because of sound in this case, it's because the power tapers off quite quickly and you won't really get much after a point. So all three of them are better driven a notch down, but surprisingly, the Hyundai is the quickest in fourth and fifth and that's due to the shorter gearing. The Brezza is as expected the strongest in third gear and there's very little difference in the 0 to 100 times of each of the cars. As far as handling goes, all three models use EPS, but each one handles differently. The Brezza being the highest, 
one would expect some body roll. Now overall the Brezza steering is light and easy to use which makes it very nimble in traffic. But as you pick up the pace or you go a little quicker, there is a certain amount of slack which just doesn't give you the kind of feel or confidence you would like from behind the wheel. Despite the disconnected feel, the Brezza handles quite tidily and along with the free revving engine, it actually offers up a fun drive. The active i20 handles light and easily too in traffic and though the steering is one of the better Hyundai steerings, it still doesn't offer the kind of connect to make you completely confident. The WRV steering strikes quite a nice balance between feeling light and easy in the city and building up quite a nice heft as you pick up the pace and go around corners. It's the one that gives you good feedback and a sense of confidence better than the other two. It also tucks into corners neatly and feels stable and planted on a highway. But if you are opting for what is a compact SUV or a crosshatch, one would imagine there are more important things than just the way it drives. You would probably be thinking of fitting the family into the back and their comfort. Now the back seat of the WRV is really the most comfortable place to be. Firstly, in terms of space, it's got the most leg room. Three can fit into this bench really nicely, easily, lots of glass area and the sunroof opens up a lot of room and you sit nice and high. The seats themselves too are very comfortable. But it's not only in terms of space, it's in terms of ride quality as well. The WRV actually has the best ride quality. It's got this nice softness and pliancy at low speeds that just shuts out all the bumps and potholes and even as you pick up the pace, it's quite flat and composed. The active i20 rear seat is at best for two and it really doesn't match up to the others on space. And although low speed ride is fairly good, when you pick up the pace, you will find yourself bouncing about in this back seat more than the others. Now the taller, more upright stance of the Brezza does open up a lot of headroom so it feels quite spacious at the back. You get good enough leg room and the bench is wide enough for three people as well. But as far as comfort goes, the ride quality is on the firmer side and it does let a lot more of the road filter through to the passenger than the other two cars. It also thuds through potholes. If this were a straightforward battle and I had to pick one winner, I would pick the WRE and here's why. It is the most spacious of the lot, whether we're talking about the interior or the boot. It comes well equipped, it has a nice cabin and there's the fact of the performance. Now it may not be as punchy as the Brezza, but it definitely does well city or highway. But unfortunately, this isn't a straightforward comparison and we're actually looking at, is it a good crosshatch or does it come well into compact SUV territory? Let's take the crosshatch battle first. The active i20 has the more premium interior. It is the more refined engine. But other than that, the WRV trumps it on every single count. And even as far as looks and appearance goes, it definitely is more plumped up and looks more the part of a crosshatch. But does it take it far enough to fall into compact SUV territory? Well, we think not. Now, despite the fact that the battle between the WRV and the Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza is fought very, very closely on every technical count, as far as appearance goes, the Brezza definitely has more attitude, looks far more the part of a compact SUV. And we're not only talking about the exterior, we're talking about the experience from behind the wheel as well. So if it's compact SUV you're looking for, the Brezza is still a winner. कभी न रुकने वाले जुनून को रफ्तार देता है सर्वो वर्ल्ड क्लास लुब्रिकेंट्स